Evening everybody, it's Des again, here to talk a little bit more about knots, bends and hitches and sort of follow on from the first two videos um, I did earlier uh, in the week. So the first two videos we talked about different types of rope um, and the different types of materials they're, they're made from to give people sort of a, a basic understanding of the, the materials you're going to be working with and using. And then we covered two of the uh, the, the most basic knots, um, two very simple stopper knots, so an overhand uh, stopper knot. Um, like that or a thumb knot I think a lot a lot of people might might refer to as and also a figure of eight knot um, probably one of my my favorites or part of one of my favorites and we talked about them because of the very basic knots and the bases for a lot of other knots it's a good start point to go from even though pretty much I expect everybody understands and knows how to tie them so the next thing I want to talk about and this is a bit more of an interest uh, than a practical is uh, the terminology so we've talked about knots um, but I keep using the term bends and hitches as well. So I just wanted to give people a bit of background on what, what that means and some of the history behind it. A, for interest, and B, because it can be slightly useful in identifying what kind of fastening you need to use. So the first thing to remember is knots, bends and hitches. These days, the terms are pretty much interchangeable. Talking about a knot, a bend or a hitch, people you know, will, will understand you're talking about the same type of thing these days. However... The preferred word today is probably knots. You very rarely hear your average person in the street who isn't a sailor or, or, or a boy scout <coughs> um, talk about bends and hitches. So not pretty much covers everything, anything to do with tying a rope, doing some of a piece of rope to, to fix things people will refer to as a knot today. But in days gone by, the three terms have pretty much more defined usages. Um, and the first sort of defined usage really is that a knot would have been thought of as something that was fairly permanent. So you would tie a knot as something you would leave in place there permanently. And you can see where that makes sense when we talked about the use of a stopper knot, you know, to go in, in a rope either to prevent the end fraying because you'd permanently want to stop it fraying or to prevent the knot being able to run through a, a eye or opening and allowing the, the rope or line to run away with you. So you can see how the permanence of that, that fixing uh, can, comes into place. Um, a bend then is another old term, and you probably, anybody that's done any sailing, will have heard the expression to, to bend a rope onto your sails, or a, a bend a rope onto a mast, to bend onto a yard or a boom. The anchor cable is bent onto the anchor. That expression and terminology comes from the description of, of the, the knot, the type of knot being a bend. Um, and a lot of the time these days, a bend would be referring to when a knot is used to join two ropes. So uh, most of the time, any when you hear someone talk about a bend, they're talking about tying two ropes together. And then finally, we've got a hitch. So a hitch then, if a, if a knot is a permanent fixing in the rope, uh, a bend uh, and a hitch being more temporary fixings, um, a hitch is more these days used to talk about when you're attaching a rope to an object. So you're using a rope to tie it to a cleat, to hook the boat on, or a post, or a pillar. You're tying it to an object rather than to a boat, uh, rather than to another rope. However, bottom line is, they're all fairly interchangeable terminology. Now, if you come over here for a second, I'm just going to pick you up and move you. You can see I've demonstrated on this little board here. And the first note, it's called a hitch, but this is a knot with two stopper knots here. A, 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 a overhand thumb knot um, and a figure eight uh, stopper knot and as I said these are the kind of permanent fixings we'd want to have in place. However beneath these I've got a sheet band. You can see here it's been used to tie together two pieces of rope to join two pieces of rope. So you can see a band joining two ropes. We also have um, here a fisherman's band um, normally used to join fishing lines. You can see how that's joined together these two um, these two bits uh, bits of rope here. So, you know, another bend um, are fixing for that. And then hitches, some other examples. We've got here a cleat hitch, which you'll have seen before as a way of tying off um, a, a rope or cable to, to a cleat on the deck or, or on the, the dock side. Um, and then a number of hitches where we've tied things off to a post or to an eye, a round turn and two half hitches, a rolling hitch, a clove hitch. So the hitches are attaching things to a, a post or pillar or thing, and the bands are used to attach two ropes together. So that's a little bit of the background um, and history of those terms. Um, 
there is some use to it because it just means when you're thinking about I need to tie two ropes together, you know what the type of knot is probably going to be a bend. I need to tie this rope to a fixing, to a post, to a pillar, because I'm going to tie an object up, such as the boat. Well, the kind of knot I'm going to use is a, is a hitch. Um, and that's useful because all these knots have names and those names link back to those historical uses of the knots. So that's a little bit of background on some of uh, the terminology used. Um, and next to look forward to is some more, slightly more advanced knots uh, from the ones we've done before. Thanks very much.